Wow, this is a desert tortoise. Hi, my name is Ann McGlucky and I'm with the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources and I'm here in Snow Canyon State Park. Tortoises are actually our only native turtle in the state of Utah. Turtles or the desert tortoise is actually part of the tortoise family and the tort tortoises are well adapted to living in very dry climates. So for example, like such as the Mojave Desert. So for example, they can actually survive many months, even a year without fresh water. The desert tortoise here um, is protected. So if you encounter one in Snow Canyon State Park or elsewhere, you wanna make sure you give it plenty of distance so you don't startle it. One of their adaptations is to store water in their bladder. So if you spook it, if you pick it up or you scare it, uh, it could actually void the contents of its bladder. Tortoises, because they store water in their bladder, that's really important to, for them to maintain or keep storing that water in their bladder because, for example, in July, when it's really dry, maybe it hasn't rained for quite, quite a few weeks, they actually need to use that water in their, in their bladder and reabsorb that to the rest of their body so that they can survive those really dry periods of time when it hasn't rained for a while. It's also really important to stay on trails because tortoises, this is a juvenile tortoise, actually a, a, I would say a sub-adult tortoise, but smaller tortoises like juveniles or even hatchlings are much harder to see. And so it's easy to actually step on one or injure one if you're not watching carefully. Perhaps you're on a bike, perhaps you're running. So make sure you stay on trails and keep alert for desert tortoises. Uh, this tortoise actually is not alive. It used to be, it died of natural causes, and we worked with a taxidermist to prepare it for education presentations. I wanted to point out a couple of really neat adaptations that tortoises have. Number one, they have a very hard shell. <laughs> you see how hard it is. And so on their shell, they, they actually can't live without their shell. Their shell is part of their body. So a lot of people ask, hey, can tortoises leave their shell like hermit crabs? No, tortoises are one with their shell. So parts of their shell, you have their vertebrals. These are scutes. This, well, first of all, this is the, the upper shell is the carapace. And the carapace is made up of several scutes, several different types of scutes. The first type of scute is the vertebral. The vertebral is actually called that because the vertebrae are actually attached underneath to, so the bone is actually, the vertebral bones are actually attached to the vertebral scutes. And then we have the costals, which are these side scutes, and then the marginals, which are on the edge of the tortoise or the, the carapace. Underneath, we have the plastron. What's interesting about tortoises is male tortoises have a concave plastron to fit over the female during mating, and females have a flat plastron. Male tortoises also have very large or long gulars, which is basically a bony projection underneath the head or the head of the tortoise. And they actually, male tortoises will actually use the gulars to bite other males, and they'll actually turn over males. Um, or flip males, so it's pretty exciting to watch them fighting. And they also, male tortoises also have a longer tail than females. So these, those three uh, major distinctions, the size of the gular, the length of the tail, and the concave plastron or flat plastron distinguish, can help you distinguish between a male or a female tortoise. Uh, tortoises, as they grow, obtain growth rings on each of these scutes. So you can actually generally estimate the age of a tortoise by counting the number of growth rings and, and seeing or kind of assessing how worn those growth rings are. When a tortoise is born, a hatchling tortoise, for example, it has no growth rings. It's, it hasn't grown at all, right? It's just come out of its eggshell and it's a basically a new tortoise. Uh, so it has no growth rings. As it ages, every time it goes through a growth period, it gets a growth ring. And that's basically, so each of these center of the scutes are called hatchling plates. And every time a tortoise grows, it gets a growth ring around the hatchling plate. You can count the number of growth rings. The only difficulty with that, though, is that a 
it's a lot of the growth rings will actually grow together. So it's hard, once they get really old, it's hard to distinguish and count the growth rings. In addition, a tortoise might actually get several growth rings in a really good year where it's rained a lot. And in another, in a poor year where it hasn't rained at all, they might not get any growth rings. So it's not like a tree, for example, if you count the growth rings on a tree, you can actually estimate how, literally how old that, that tree is. On a tortoise, it's a lot more fuzzy. You can't make that distinction. Um, so those are the different factors I wanted to point out about the shell of a tortoise. And so, yeah, tortoises are really interesting animals and had a lot of amazing adaptations that allow them to live in a harsh environment like the Mojave Desert. Another thing I wanted to point out is that this hard shell is really important to protect animals from predators. When a tortoise is born, comes out of its egg shell as a hatchling, its shell is very soft. The shell is actually made up of keratin, which is the same material that your fingernails are made out of, but very many, many layers to make it a lot more tougher than, for example, your fingernails. So as a hatchling, a tortoise is really vulnerable to all types of predators, such as ants or roadrunners, ravens, um, foxes, coyotes. As the tortoise ages, the shell gets hard. So about the time a tortoise is 20 years old, the shell is very hard like this tortoise. And so it's only predators, only animals that it has to worry about is mountain lions, which can actually crack open the shell of a tortoise, or coyotes, which they can't crack open the shell of a tortoise, but they can chew on a, par a part of the shell or maybe on a limb. And then of course, humans are always a predator that they have to worry about. So yeah, those are the different predators this is a desert tortoise burrow, and I know it's a desert tortoise burrow because it has the classic semicircular shape, so just like the back of a tortoise shell. In addition, there's tortoise scat, so tortoise droppings, and that's a clear indication that a tortoise has been using this burrow frequently. In addition, from this tortoise burrow, you can see actually flattened wide paths as wide or the width of an adult desert tortoise. So a tortoise uses this frequently, coming and going and creating these paths from this burrow. A lot of people say they've lived here for years and they've never seen a desert tortoise. Well, desert tortoises are actually really good at camouflage. And looking at this burrow, you might think, oh, there's no tortoises in here and maybe a tortoise hasn't used it because the scat isn't very fresh and I don't see a tortoise. Well, tortoises can go deep in their burrows, so you might not be able to see them at all. And they only come out when weather is, well, weather is perfect for them, basically, or weather is warm or uh, cloud cover. Maybe there's some precipitation. Um, so tortoises are very particular about when they're going to be active and when they're going to eat plants and vegetation. And so a lot of people who haven't seen tortoises for many years or have never seen a tortoise here, they actually probably have walked by a tortoise. Maybe the tortoise, when it heard the person walking by, tucked in its shell um, and lit, was very still. Tortoises can actually look like a rock. So if people are quickly walking by, they'll think it's a rock in the side of the road when it actually is a tortoise. Or tortoises might go in their burrows and might not come out for a couple hours. Maybe they're waiting for the weather to warm up or for maybe the weather to cool down. Maybe it's too hot. So burrows provide shelters for tortoises and uh, protection from predators. And in addition, tortoises are actually what we call ectotherms. So they actually use behavior and the environment to regulate their temperature. So if it's too hot or too cold, they'll retreat into a burrow. And if they want to warm up, they might what we call bask. So they'll lay their front legs out or extend their front legs, extend their back legs and increase the surface area um, that is warm up, the, warm up basically their surface area, their skin um, to increase their temperature. So this is a desert tortoise and it is actually federally protected as a threatened species. It's also state protected. And the reason why it is both federally and state protected is that the numbers over the years have declined significantly. So we're, and the reason why their numbers have declined is that 
um, well, if anybody who's lived here for a number of years knows that the populate, human population growth has increased dramatically. So some of the biggest threats to tortoises include habitat loss, and the habitat loss is due to just additional growth, human growth in Washington County, as well as um, predators. So we might have an increase in ravens as well as other types of predators that um, kill tortoises. And we also have loss due to humans. Um, that could include uh, tortoises or individuals, people killing tortoises on roads, as well as removing tortoises illegally from their habitat. Uh, and then as well, um, we have habitat degradation. So for example, in 2005, there was a big wildfire which burned much of their habitat. And so that burning of the, a lot of the vegetation here in the Mojave Desert is not, um, can't tolerate wildfires very well. Um, and so it's a lot of the native plants, native shrubs are very vulnerable to wildfires. So they don't grow back. What instead grows back is native, uh, or actually non-native grasses, such as cheatgrass and red brome. So this is actually cheatgrass. And so you can see quite a bit of it and it's increased over the years in Washington County. So when you have cheatgrass, you have an area that's much more vulnerable to fires. And then of course, um, disease. Um, so tortoises actually can have what we call the upper respiratory tract disease, which is similar to kind of a, a pneumonia where um, they lose their sense of smell, their nasal tissue kind of degrades and they become vulnerable to other types of infections. And then over a course of many years, they actually ultimately die. And then they can also spread that disease to other tortoises. Um, and that disease can actually be introduced to a population by captive tortoises. So we want to make sure that we don't release captive tortoises to the wild to protect native tortoises or resident tortoises. And we want to make sure that we don't remove tortoises. Um, when we're hiking, we see a tortoise, we need to leave it alone so that tortoises can be appreciated by future generations. Another life history characteristic of tortoises is low fecundity. That means they don't produce many eggs. So females, for example, can lay up to three clutches in a season. Each clutch will have up to one to 10 eggs in it, on average five. So generally a tortoise, a female tortoise, will lay about 15 eggs per season. And so we consider that low fecundity or low production of eggs. Um, if, also, if you consider their high juvenile mortality or egg mortality, so if you consider that out of 100 hatchlings, uh, only 5% survive, you can imagine how many years a tortoise, a female tortoise would have to produce eggs to even produce one or increase the odds of, of one of her hatchlings reaching to adulthood. This is a desert tortoise and he is actually a live desert tortoise and we almost walked by him. Tortoises specialize in camouflage and and then if they see if they hear somebody coming by they'll actually tuck themselves tight into their shell and sit still and so a lot of people will walk by uh, a tortoise and think it's a rock or not even see it because it's basically still and not moving. So I've actually had people come up to me and say they that lived here for 20, 30, 40 years and they've never seen a tortoise. Well, I bet they've walked by a tortoise and not realized it. In addition to find tortoises, you have to have really good timing. That means you need to be out and about when tortoises are active. So for example, a good time to see a tortoise would be in the spring when fresh flowers are out. Uh, that's their favorite food and they're active and out looking for flowers. And so you also want to hike when there's cloud cover. <laughs> so when there's cloud cover, there's higher precipitation and higher humidity. And so tortoises are more active when there's a chance of rain or potential for rain. And so this tortoise is actually pretty still. Um, he's just kind of sitting tight waiting for the temperatures to warm. It's a pretty cool morning. The surface ground temperature is pretty low, relatively speaking. And he's just kind of hanging out. He's probably a little bit nervous of us too. So if we move away, he 
might do and continue his search for food. This is the burrow that we looked at earlier and we didn't see any tortoise at the entrance. And now a little bit later, perhaps about an hour later, we see a tortoise and he's at the entrance and he's probably thinking about he or she, it's probably a female because if you look at the, the size of the gulars, they're pretty small. This tortoise is deciding on whether it's, whether it's going to be coming out or not. Probably he's waiting for the weather to get a little, or the temperatures, surface temperatures to get a little bit warmer. Thank you for joining us to learn about desert tortoises. The different things you can do to help is stay on trails, and that protects small tortoises, which are easy to miss, and you could harm them by stepping on them. Um, and then you can also crush burrows if you move off trail. Keep your dogs on a leash. That's really important because dogs can run up to tortoises and scare them and uh, make them lose the contents of their bladder, which is the, that contents of the bladder is really important to keep the tortoise hydrated. Uh, throw trash in the proper places like trash receptacles. So make sure you just don't dump trash on the ground and dumping trash in the ground can attract ravens. And of course, ravens can eat small hatchlings and juveniles. And then as well, make sure that if you have a campfire or if you're a smoker, make sure you dispose of your cigarette butts properly in trash cans. And then also make sure you put your campfires out. So that all of those things can help protect desert tortoises as well as tortoise habitat. Have a good day.